uh, surrounds of my own computer. Um, I'm going to uh, start the, um, the recording here. Unfortunately, something I was not able to do on, on that computer yesterday. Okay, uh, apologize if I eat my breakfast while, while um, I'm delivering this lecture. Um, we'll try not to put the banana peel on the floor. Um, so I mentioned the, the importance of, of uh, collecting data. I think all of us in the room would have very limited use of these models if we couldn't um, <coughs> extract data from them that will give further insight, data on which we can reflect, data which we can analyze with external tools, et cetera. Um, and this reflects the fact there's a frequent model or need to record some components of model state or, or in fact, model behavior over time. Maybe state variables. things that, that are instantaneous or characteristics of the system right now. It could be summaries of, of that state or state at an individual level. In other cases, what may, may be interest is more flow variable from a system dynamics perspective. How many people, and these are weights from an epidemiological perspective, um, or is the number of incident cases within the past week within the model? Um, that's different. You're not looking at the model at one particular point in time being able to count it. You have to count it up over time, accumulate those, and then use them, right? Mm -hmm. And in fact, one of the exercises, the um, calibration exercise, has you go through um, building up one of these variables to record flow statistics. Very important. And, and when you first think about it, it's not immediately obvious how you do it. Um, so uh, any logic allows for definition of data sets to record things in statistics summarizing model state. Summarizing state at a given point in time. If you want to collect flow variables, which I would argue are at least as important as the current state of the model, um, you can do that very readily with the variable. And um, again, it's indicated in the, it's, it's suggested in the, um, in, in that exercise is how to do it. And I think I may, may show that just because it's so important. And then you can report on values of data sets as graphs or tables that are shown. One of the nice features of any logic is this doesn't require creating custom code. These are all sort of built-in things you can, you can add to your model, hitch up uh, quite easily graphically. Mm. So there's a variety of ways of, of outputting data once it's available. Um, you can ad hoc export things in a way it can be copied to Excel. Um, you can copy from, from data sets or from variables themselves. You can export to files right to the console, this sort of thing that reports what's going on in the model. You can export to, to uh, databases, um, do data set archiving in any logic professional, and capture images of graphs. Okay, um, okay. one thing that um, I will urge you to think about um, is that um, it's often key when you record data from a model to record an aspect of context that will let you know unambiguously where the state came from. What version of a model, what were your assumptions in running the model, so what were the parameter values, and what was your intention? Um, ideally, you could have what was your intention of running this? Why did you run this? Because often you want to go back and reflect on earlier runs that where you were seeking to investigate this intervention or seeking to simulate this condition um, under assumption that the economy would go south or you know, um, uh, you were seeking to do robustness assessment of the model and maybe later you find a bug and you want to go back and find an earlier version where you test it with respect to some extreme condition. Did that version have it in there? Keeping this meta data, this data about that, the data you're recording, is, is often, it's not just, to say key, it's underexpressing it. It is essential. It is, without this, the data you record may have virtually no value because you don't know later sort of where this came from. So it may offer very short term value where these things are in your head, it'll probably offer that value, but a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, it'll offer very little value. Um, uh, and if, if you, um, if you're a to disseminate results from your model, having them cross 
cross-link with this information will be key because someone may ask you to expand on those results, comment more on them, um, analyze this other thing, and you want to go back to the exact model version and the exact assumptions you had so you can do those sorts of analysis. Um, so you want to think carefully about, um, about saving away this information. And if we have time in this class, we'll talk about a system we've built up that works with any logic to do exactly this, called Silver. Um, okay, so what I'd like you to do is to load in a model that we're gonna, with which we're gonna be becoming familiar today, and that's uh, SIR agent-based calibration. Okay, um, should be under sample models within the um, within the help menu. So um, let's um, let's go.